well nourished and maybe have a drink. Um, so I'd love to tell a little brief story. Um, usually when I MC, I'm MCing um, a pageant. And so usually there is lots of time for me to fill. So I had lots of stories, but Jack created such a great script that I really don't have to fill very much, which is probably good for you guys too. <laughs> so I wanted to say I am actually a violinist and um, I studied with Stephen Ships and that's how I met the Carlson family. So I'm very grateful Steve has brought many wonderful people into my life. And something that is a treasured memory that I have about Stuart is that when we go to the University of Cambridge for a summer violin festival run by myself and Professor Ships, we usually are with Stuart and Jack Carlson. And I look forward to this every year, not because we are at the University of Cambridge in the UK, one of the most beautiful architectural utopias of the world, not because we get to play the violin for 12 days straight, but because I get to spend my dinners watching The Big Bang Theory with Stuart Carlson. <laughs> and I look forward to this every year. And because it's just such a joy in my life, I actually deprive myself of The Big Bang Theory for all other days of the year, except for when Stuart is there to watch it with me, because it's so much more fun to watch The Big Bang Theory with Stuart, because he can tell me all about like what this is like to be Sheldon Cooper and to know things about science. And I did graduate from the University of Michigan, so I am smart, but it is a really wonderful thing to be able to have Stuart explain astrophysics to me as well while we eat vanilla wafers. So that's one of my close um, funny stories about Stuart. And this other gentleman who will be brought out and will be performing with him is also a very special person that many of you know, Mr. Brad Phillips. And Brad is a treasure um, in our local area um, and abroad. He sounds like Mark O'Connor, if you haven't heard him play already. Um, he sounds better than Mark O'Connor, potentially, too. He sounds like Brad. Um, but Brad is amazing and has a really, really special story. Um, and he actually brought me back to my violin. Because when I was feeling kind of um, at a point where I realized I wasn't going to be a violinist, but I was going to be um, playing probably Lady Gaga and Pop music on the Miss America stage as opposed to Bach. Um, Brad gave me some fiddle lessons and really helped me to approach my violin in a more loving and careful way. So I appreciate Brad for that. Now, Brad and Stuart will be playing um, a piece called Farewell and Good Riddance. It is a mashup of four songs, and those include a Shokin Farewell, heard in Ken Burns' The Civil War series on PBS, and I'm sure you will recognize. Green Days, Good Riddance, Cold Plays, Viva La Vida, and Johann Pachelbel's Canon in D. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage Brad Phillips and Stuart Carlson.
Hi, everybody. Nice to be back on my home stage. This place has become home over the years, and, um, um, and I have a, a story about Mott Children's Hospital that has um, some meaning around the idea of home and family. Um, in the fall of 2014, I started my uh, first semester of grad school at the School of Music here, and uh, in November, yeah, I think I said that already, November of that <laughs> semester, our third child, Evelyn, was born. And some of you know Evelyn's story, but some of you don't, so uh, I'm just going to try to um, tell a short version of it. Um, I finished the first year of grad school without sleep, <laughs> with a new baby at home, and uh, we got to May or so, and Evelyn went for her six-month checkup, you know, where they squish the belly and make sure everything is where it should be and all the things they do for infants. And our pediatrician over in Dexter did the belly squishing and she said, hmm, I think I feel some fullness here. I really don't think it's anything, but let's just schedule an ultrasound just in case. And we're like, yeah, okay, it's probably nothing, but sure, ultrasound up, let's do it. <clears throat> so a few weeks later, um, Kate, my wife, who was a nurse at Mott at the time, got up early and took Evelyn to, to Mott for her ultrasound, and I got a text from her that said, Brad, it's bad. <clears throat> and um, a week later, we were there getting Evelyn's central line placed and biopsies done for what turned out to be stage three intermediate risk neuroblastoma. Um, over the next year or so, uh, Evelyn underwent four rounds of chemotherapy and major abdominal surgery, and then another four rounds of chemotherapy. Um, two days before the surgery, um, it was my third semester of grad school, I kept going. I thought I needed to keep going and to do something just to keep busy. Um, <clears throat> Two days before surgery, I was at this place, on this stage, delivering my master's recital, much like what Stuart's doing tonight. And um, we played a piece that night that I'll tell you about in a minute, but um, family. When you go through something like this, you, you really learn what that means. And people at the University of Michigan School of Music became family. People at Mott Hospital became family. The Ark became home, Mott became home, the School of Music became home for me and for all of us. Um, <clears throat> in March of 2016, our friends put on a benefit concert for Evelyn here, and it sold out. The Ark hosted a benefit for Evelyn and, and our family, and I'll never forget standing up here and feeling that and what that felt like. Um, I, I describe it like what George Bailey must have felt like at the end of It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> but it changed my life, you know? You go through tough things and, um, and you get to see the best of people. And it, it comes out in really amazing ways. Um, and, uh, and that's Evelyn's story. Now, Evelyn <laughs> is three years old now. She's two years off chemo, and she's doing just fine. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I mentioned that two days before surgery, I was on the stage um, playing my recital. And that night, I played a piece that I'd written for Evelyn called Sweet Evelyn. And uh, I haven't played it since that night but we're gonna play it tonight. So I'd like to bring out Jacob and Grant.
Sometimes one must electrify.
Thank you. So Jacob Warren right here, guys. Jacob Warren. And Mr. Grant Flick. And now for something completely different. I'm sure you guessed by the title in the program, Squirrel Hunter is probably way different than Sweet Evelyn. I thought it was a jazz tune. Oh, maybe it is. <laughs> okay.
about these guys. Joe, I'm going to unplug this. Do I have, I do have a mic. Oh my, okay. Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming out to this tonight. Um, I don't know, I, I don't want to talk for Grant, but since he doesn't have a mic right now, uh, Grant and I were so happy to be invited to be a part of this. Um, yeah, we're, we're really, really excited. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do one more song for you as this trio, and then I think we're gonna move on to some other stuff. Uh, but the last tune that we're gonna do is one that I wrote, um, and this one is called "Graduation Tune." So, like all of the people you see here on stage, I am affiliated with the University of Michigan, and I uh, yes, go blue. <laughs> uh, and I did my undergrad there, um, and I graduated last April, and this tune was the tune that I wrote. Um, to close out my senior recital. Uh, wasn't at the ARC, but I'm back for my master's and I'm hoping that maybe I'll get to do a master's recital here when I'm done. But uh, yeah, seems, seems like the place to do it, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so this is graduation tune. Thank you. 
Thanks, guys. That's Jacob Warren, Brad Flick, and that was a lot of fun. Thank you all. I have some good news to tell you that I learned while you were playing, and that is that Stuart's favorite part about going to Cambridge is watching Big Bang Theory with me, too. <laughs> Who would have known? It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. John Bank Barks. Oh my goodness, he even told me again it was Barks. Dr. John Barks is a professor of pediatrics and the director of neonatology at the University of Michigan CS Mott Children's Hospital. He has been the neonatologist here since 1990 and before that did some of his fellowship training here as well from 1985 to 1987. Dr. Barks is here representing the whole team of people who care for babies of the newborn ICU today, as they did 22 years ago when Stuart was born. We asked Dr. Barks to spend a few minutes talking about how they care for premature babies now and how that has changed since Stuart was born. So please join me in welcoming Dr. John Barks. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Heather. So the, we've heard two really great stories. It's been an honor and a pleasure for me. Two great stories about the resilience of small children and of the human spirit and, and the body. And I'm really proud to be here to represent a whole team of people in the newborn ICU who took care of Stuart 22 years ago three of whom are in the audience somewhere. I can't see them because the lights are way too bright, but mm -hmm. Michelle Nemshack and Sandy Cardone and Barb Keating are up there somewhere in that general direction. Uh, three people I've, I've had the privilege of working with for at least 22 years, probably longer. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about how the NICU is different now and how taking care of babies is different now than it was then. So um, when Stuart was born, the NICU was designed like a barn or a stable. Now um, every baby gets their own room. So when it was designed like a barn, there were probably six babies taken care of in a space smaller than the size of this stage. And I think uh, Stuart's mom would probably tell you that there were not exactly fights, but competition for the few rocking chairs that existed. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of privacy. There were those sort of pull-around curtains that are not much more dignified than all those gowns that we love wearing that have a gap in the back. <laughs> so there really wasn't privacy. On the other hand, I think parents and nurses and all the parents in the room got to know each other because there was this communal space in which they and their babies went through stuff together. Um, so now we have a much bigger space. Every baby gets their own room. That means every family has their own uh, rocking chair-like thing, their own pull-out couch, um, a lot of space. And what hasn't changed uh, in the NICU, though, is that we're all there because we love caring for babies. Um, that, that part hasn't changed. Sadly, some of the other parts that haven't changed is some of those um, three initial acronyms which Stuart's parents um, heard us speaking in when we were speaking that foreign language. Some of them we have got better, the outcomes are better than they were 22 years ago. Some of them still haven't improved any and we have a lot of work to do. One of those would be 
the condition called necrotizing enterocolitis, the abdominal thing, that infection that required Stuart and his brother to have emergency abdominal surgery one day in, in our hospital, in which Stuart survived and Spencer didn't. So, um, so we still have a lot of work to do, and so we really appreciate the support of everybody who's come out tonight to support the work that we do in Mott in supporting families, in taking care of babies, and, and also figuring out how to care for babies better so that in the future there won't be as many babies who have to deal with some of the complications that Stuart and his brother had. And so thank you again very much for coming here tonight. It's really been an honor and a pleasure to be here and part of this for me and for all of us from the NICU, a full circle moment. So thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Barks. It is so amazing to think of how we're able to have such a community that stays together and what a legacy you've left and your team at Mod is still leaving. So we will now bring Carmen to the stage to do a little bit of a stage shift, and then we'll be moving on to a piece written by Stuart that's the fiddle suite in A major, and this is with Stuart, Brad, Stephen Ships, Tony Elliott, Jacob, and Grant. So we'll have that very shortly. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now, as we undo what we just did, I will say some important words that I'm really excited to share with you. So thank you so much to The Ark for having us tonight, to Allison, to Joe, and our wonderful sound engineers, to our stage manager, Carmen, who has been doing some heavy lifting tonight, quite literally. And also, yes, thank you. Also to our sponsors, to you who are in the audience and all of the representatives that are here from Mott Children's Hospital. We're so glad that you were here with us this evening. Thank you for spending your Thursday with us. Happy International Women's Day. Yeah. Excellent. So thank you again so much for being here. We do have one final piece for you this evening that Stuart and Amy I will bring out for shortly. Um, but I do have some exciting news, which is that tonight we have raised um, just a little bit over $15,000 for Mott Children's Hospital. So that's wonderful news, and we're so glad that you got to be a part of it and joined in with us tonight. It's all about contribution and giving back to our communities, as Stuart reminded us early this evening. So thank you again for all that you've done. And I think, without further ado, it is time to welcome Stuart and Amy back out to the stage for their final piece. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight and supporting Mott Hospital. Uh, I would like to dedicate this last piece to Dr. Rudy Ansbacher, who passed away uh, two months ago. He, uh, his <coughs> son and wife are here in the audience tonight. And he delivered, uh, well, he delivered me and Spencer uh, 22 years ago today. And he also delivered my brother, Justin, who is here in the audience tonight. I'd like to end with my original arrangement of Amazing Grace. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you so much for coming out tonight to support Moth Hospital. I would like to end uh, tonight by playing one more piece. It's a lovely piece called Ballad by George Inescu. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> 